Welcome to the Wiser Wealth Management Roundtable, where we believe the best financial advice should always be conflict-free. I'm your host, Casey Smith, guiding you to financial freedom. My co-hosts, Brad Lyons and Matthews Barnett. Hey, guys. Hi, Casey. How's it going? We have a very special guest today. Rick Bemis is with us with Rick Bemis Counseling. Rick, hello. Hey, how are you? We're doing great. This session is something that I've just seeing in my friend group, seeing within our client base is coping with job loss in a pandemic. Job loss is hard enough, Rick. Do it in the middle of a pandemic. That's a whole different ballgame. So there's a scenario here that I'll go through. We have probably about 30% of our client base, maybe a little, maybe a little more now, are airline pilots. We specialize in working with them, partially because of my background in aviation. I understand where they're coming from. Uh, but we have a unique situation where we've had uh, a job loss. And in some cases, we have airlines that have just disappeared. It's not really in the primary news because, you know, the, the main news covers American, Delta, United, right? Uh, Southwest, Alaska, all the big major airlines and regional. But then there's a subset of regional carriers out there that um, like Express Jet, Atlantic Southeast Airlines, uh, that airline is now, now gone. Uh, we have Trans States Airlines in the north Northeast. They're gone. Uh, and you have a unusual situation where and you've had an airline failure, but there's no place for them to go right now. Right. And my heart just breaks for them because I, I know it was like in 2014 when I hung up my caps and hat and I decided um, Wiser needed my full attention. Uh, I know that, that there's, there's a part of me that, that was missing after that because, you know, I went down to the airport to travel for Wiser and I looked up and I saw my airplane taking off down the runway. I was like, oh, they did it without me. I can't believe this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I was it. pilot like, you know, 2000 out of 2000. It wasn't, wasn't like I was uh, running the operation or anything. But um, that's that's what I want to chat about today. Let's just let's be uh, let's be real about. Uh, maybe uh, our own struggles through through this time, but also uh, being uh, empathetic to to others. Uh, maybe the takeaway here is, is is how to show love and compassion to others, even if you're in a great position uh, where you are right now. Um, but yeah, Rick, um, you know you you uh, you have a contract with uh, uh, Delta. Is that correct? Or you're part of the network that they refer out to. That's correct. I'm a I'm a part of the uh, United Healthcare Network and the Aetna, Aetna Network, which also takes care of their employee assistance program. So I see a lot of Delta folks. My office is right next to the uh, the corporate headquarters, and uh, I love it that way. I really enjoy the airlines. I was with Delta for 12 years. Well, you you can uh, learn more. Uh, about Rick at um, uh, rickbemiscounseling.com, R-I-C-K-B-E-M-I-S, counseling.com. Um, but let's let's go ahead and get started, Rick. What are some things that you think uh, should be on uh, people's minds uh, initially, at least right now? Well, I, I would just say that this is a very tough time in the history of our country. There's no question about it. Uh, between the pandemic and the election, uh, people are feeling very uh, anxious. Uh, I think people uh, are struggling with the stress of uh, all of the things that are occurring right now. And, uh, you know, one of the top things in my mind is uh, the idea or the concept of avoiding toxic exposure. You know, there's just too much negativity out there right now. And we are going to get through these times. We're going to be able to look back at it and we're going to be able to talk to our kids about it as something that happened in the past, just like the depression. And uh, if you watch too much news, if you talk this stuff over too much, it can be very, very uh, negative for your, for your mental health. Yeah. We, we talked about earlier surrounding yourself with positive people and you gave an example of, you know, during the, the Delta's, uh, uh, bankruptcy. Yes. That, that 
pilots are hanging out with each other and it was just, <laughs> yeah, it just turned into not a good environment. <laughs> yeah. So some of the guys that I speak to in my office uh, would tell me that everybody would get together and talk about what was going on in the bankruptcy. And of course, that was a very, very hard time for Delta pilots, just as it is uh, now. And uh, they would complain to me that the, uh, the conversation was almost completely negative. And I think we all have to watch out for that uh, these days. You know, what can you do? that you feel is positive and helpful to you on a day-to-day -day basis, whether you're flying or you're not flying, uh, and what can you say to other people that can be more positive, and what can you think that is uh, of a more positive nature? Because we are what we think, we are what we do, and so we have to think uh, about the things that are going to uh, help us to be more uh, positive. You talked about avoiding toxic exposure. Can you explain that a little bit? Well, you know, what I think about most is the 9-11 the, uh, 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 situation, some of the crashes that we dealt with uh, in the 90s and the early 2000s. And uh, uh, we would always tell people, uh, to listen to the NTSB or the FAA because they were there on site and could give us the best briefings possible and not to go home and look at ABC News, NBC, <laughs> CBS, uh, because it's just toxic. It can be so negative and so uh, demeaning after a while, and it's only going to affect your mental health in a, in a negative way. People get more anxious. They get more depressed. It's just almost like they get hyper focused on it. That's exactly they, right. When they really shouldn't be, they just got the best briefing they could possibly get. That's it. And they should just walk away, right? Until it, the next briefing. <laughs> same same thing with the pandemic and the politics. You know, uh, uh, you know, get a little bit of it in the morning so you know what's going on, and then forget about it and go about your business, go about your day. You know, when, when the <clears throat> pandemic was was starting, um, you know, we didn't quite fully understand there was, there's probably some anxiety over that, but, you know, just as a, a, a leader in this firm, I, I put us all on a video chat uh -huh. <laughs> and basically said, what did I say? We're not going to participate right. in a recession. That yeah, We're not going to have job loss here. We're not going to participate uh, in any of the madness. We are going to uh, get through this and we're going to get through this stronger. And in fact, it's we're going to be a better firm on the other side because of this, yeah. because if there is a quiet time, we're going to, we're going to take the time to renew our processes, which we did. Brad and I went through a lot of uh, processes. We had Matthews during the, during the pandemic uh, at the beginning stages of it. Um, and I, th I think it's, you have to have that mindset that, okay, I didn't create any of this. I have a stellar work record. I, you know, I've done everything that I'm supposed to do. It's not my fault that I'm in this position. Yes. Right. And I'm going to then uh, say, okay, I'm going to find another job similar or maybe not. Some people may just walk away mm -hmm. from, from their existing career, airline pilot or not, but you have to, you have to, it's almost like you, you can't have, uh, you can't be defeated. You, 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 you have to walk into it and say, Hey, I'm going to conquer this. I'm, I'm better than the situation. Um, I tell, I tell my daughter sometimes, you know, don't let other people define who you are. That's great. And I th I feel like that that's, that's what, uh, this pandemic and the job situation potentially has to do to people. It's trying to redefine what they are and, 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 and or who they are, uh, as, as men, especially, I haven't seen studies this on, on women. Um, but for men, they, they seem to, we seem to identify with what we do for a living. Absolutely. And it's very important. Well, I think Rick you know? mentioned that earlier, and I thought it was an interesting point that we are what we think and we are what we do. And when you're coping with a loss of a career, you're also coping with a loss of that part of your identity. Yes. Okay. Being a captain of an airline pilot, I mean, can you think of anything higher than that? I mean, you, are, you are in charge <laughs> of everything that happens, and you're 35,000 feet above the ground, you know? Um, that's an incredible responsibility. And then when that's gone, I mean, it's something that I would think that has to be dealt with in a realistic manner. 
before you can begin to move on from there and recognize that that's part of who you are, but there's another part that can be focused on if the first part is is gone. Yeah, what I've seen on on Facebook um, across the board, people that don't really even know that well, just from the airline, I see a lot of pictures with them and kids. And I, that's the one thing I think came positive about the pandemic for us is being able to be home more and not 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 traveling around as much. So th- there's gonna be some there's some positive uh, things to do with that. I, you know, we we've um, uh, th- there's a whole other side to this, which we, I guess we can get to uh, in a little bit. That there's a financial side. So not not only with the job loss, loss of ad- identity, create an issue, but there's also um, okay, how do I pay my bills? Uh, and, and I'll circle back around that in, in, in a minute. But there, there's a, there's a couple of ways that things can get awry here. Um, one of those is one of the things you specialize in, Rick, is substance abuse. Yes. And, and it, so I asked you earlier, and, and it's kind of a silly question, but what? How do you avoid substance abuse during during a uh, pandemic <laughs> and? Uh, <laughs> You're out of a job. It's a very good question. <laughs> I've been struggling with that myself. Uh, just the thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just the thought. So when we would go out on critical incidents, one of the things we would say is avoid increased use of nicotine, caffeine, alcohol. Uh, and uh, notice I said avoid increased use. I right. didn't say stop. Because that's going to create a trauma of its own. <laughs> but people have to be very careful. And uh, there's no question that uh, I've had folks come in who have had an increase in their drinking just because they're home. They're not doing anything or they're not doing as much as they have been in the past. And so it's definitely something to think about, definitely something to, uh, uh, to work with. Um, nobody wants to uh, ruin... Uh, their relationships or their health, uh, and there are definitely ways to to combat it. The uh, I guess the other side of that substance abuse is usually masking anxiety and depression. Uh, do you have any tips for our listeners on avoiding anxiety and depression? Yeah, I mean, I would say that uh, if you're uh, stuck at home and you feel like there's not very much going on. Uh, boredom can certainly uh, hurt you and it can lead to increased anxiety or depression and you have to think about the things that you really enjoy doing. Uh, For uh, some of us older guys, think about what you used to love to do as a kid and try to find things that are meaningful to you and get you out and get you working at something. Otherwise, uh, you're like everybody else. You're bound to ruminate on the things that are problems more than the solutions. Yeah, I, I could see, um, it, you know, let's say you enjoy reading. If you could just get lost in a book yeah, for a few hours, I could see how that just separates you from from the issues in you know, the movie theater, if we could have, yes. I guess I don't know if the theaters are open <laughs> you can't or not. Go there. I don't think you can go there, but, but certainly Soon. watching a movie, Soon. uh, watching a movie at, at home, maybe that, that's the, uh, part that, that gets you back or maybe it's fly fishing. Maybe it's uh, hopping in the car and driving to your favorite fishing hole or, or a new fishing hole, whatever it is for you, you know, but just don't s- stick around the house and do nothing. It's, it's very, uh, uh, very toxic. Yeah. Or it could be sticking around the house doing all those things you meant to do. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but you're, you uh, are too yeah. busy. You're too gone to, uh-huh. uh, to accomplish it. I've, I've seen yeah. a lot of, uh, uh, I, I don't know what paint sales are. We should walk down the show uh, Williams after this and I'll ask bet, him how their sales have I'll been. I bet they're great. I bet you it's been through the roof. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for anybody who has, you know, had a, an interruption in their career, they, they, they will certainly recognize that, that there is the loss of the income, there's the loss of the job, there's the loss of the, um, the, that, that part of your career, but then there's the opportunity that is being presented at that yes. same point in time. Yes. You know, um, to do some of the things that 
you wanted to do. Because as we were talking earlier in the, uh, before we went on live here is that, you know, it's just a season in our careers or our lives. Yes. It's, it's not the rest of our lives unless we're officially retired. Um, so to take advantage of that time and say, I'm going to go on that trip. I'm going to go, you know, learn how to play the saxophone. I'm going right. to learn how to do something so that when this season is over, I will have accomplish something yes that i can now take with me you know as an additive feature to you know who i am and, and what i do yeah you mentioned kind of hobbies or just things you've always wanted to do you could also for that future career you're looking for maybe there's designations or anything Absolutely. extra that could kind of advance you while, during that off time been a lot of real estate agents i've seen online I think every flight attendant right. I know is all of a sudden <laughs> <laughs> has turned into a real estate agent, which makes sense. Well, there are transferable skills in every career. Absolutely. Okay. Now, as a pilot, I mean, you are a captain. Leadership is tremendous at that station. station. Um, well, leadership supposed, is transferable supposed to be, yes. into <laughs> any you know, career and any life choice. So, I mean, there are transferable skills that should be exploited. Yes. Into a new career, new job. Well, I, I think you're right. And, uh, you know, I love my pilots. And uh, I agree that uh, if you think about meaning in a job, there's hardly anything you can think of. Maybe president, maybe not. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, uh, you know, uh, there's hardly anything that is more important. And you're taking care of the lives of people who are in the back of that plane. What could be more uh, meaningful uh, than that? So if you can't do that job or you're laid off from it, furloughed from it for a while, what do you do that gives you meaning? It's very, very important to think about that and then to do something uh, about it. And I would just say parenthetically, it was very hard for me in 2005 when I started to think Delta Airlines might actually go bankrupt because I was in the employee assistance program as a counselor. And I knew if you didn't fly a plane or fix a plane, uh, you probably were not going to be there. And uh, I do want to say I took my own advice. I was proactive. I started looking for a job long before the employee assistance program dissolved. And I went over to Emory and uh, I ran the behavioral health portion of their faculty staff assistance program. Uh, and after about 18 months, I really missed the airline. And that's how I got back to uh, the area uh, around the airport to start a, a private practice. But that whole journey was a very, very anxiety-provoking journey for me. I hated leaving Delta, and uh, I still love the airline. So I, I can identify with that, with, with the pilots, with the flight attendants. Most of those people really love what they do. Uh, that's a good point. It's it's almost like a, uh, uh, it's like a club, you know. Uh, some of them even so much so the senior ones they 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 will bid to fly together, so they're working with the same people, absolutely going on the same uh, or similar route. Uh, obviously, for for most of us in our in our time, that was almost impossible to do. But uh, but some some do get to get to that point. So let's transition. I, th I think that's a good point, Rick. You, you basically said you saw the ship sinking and said, okay, I'm going to take the anxiety route and I'm going to jump ship. Yes. Um, you know, for, for, for the airline people, it's harder to do that because there's a seniority number. And so you don't ever want to walk away from a seniority number. Absolutely. Until it's, until it's, uh, uh you've been officially set aside, but it, 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 and, and, but it depends on where you are. Delta, United, American, you wouldn't walk away from that number. Um, however, on the regional level, which we have a lot of pilots who listen to our podcast that are on the regional level as well, yes. it might make sense. It might make sense to say, you know what, I'm going to go back to this corporate job because I'm pretty sure that this job won't be here uh, a year from now or six months from now. Or we're going to know a lot more about this by uh, the end of this month or January for yes. sure, yes. depending on uh, stimulus and, and, and everything else. But yeah, I would say don't uh, in any in any job, don't be afraid to take that leap into 
what appears to be a healthier path for you uh, somewhere else. I have some regional guys who are thinking about that right now, and they are interviewing for jobs. Uh, and they're sort of standing on the fence between do I do this and do I leave or do I stick with what I'm, what I'm doing? And it's very, very hard to know. At, yep. at this point in time. So they really do struggle. Yeah, I, I met pilots at the very beginning of my aviation career that got jobs with Pan Am. And when they got the job with Pan Am, uh, it was like they'd won the lottery and they would <laughs> never have to work for a job ever again because Absolutely. Pan Am will never, ever go out of business. Delta used to say that. And Pan Am doesn't even exist anymore. That's right. Like Matthews is looking at me like, I've never heard of Pan Am. Delta gobbled him up. <laughs> never flown on it. I've uh, yeah. read about it. Yeah, Howard Hughes. You saw it in a movie. You saw it in a movie yeah. once. Yeah, that's it. The Aviator. <laughs> There's a whole other airline called Eastern Airlines, too. Yeah, they're gone. So, yeah, you never you never know, right? Delta gobbled them up, too. I, 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 would, I would say that Looking for a job, um, you you have to remain positive and you have to walk into the job with the attitude of, I'm going to tell them who I am and, and hopefully this will be a good fit right. for me. But you never walk in thinking, I have to have this job. Like, I have to get this job. Uh, because that is generally don't work out because you, you tend to tense up. That's true. You know, but but be well prepared for the job. Yeah. Uh, but don't don't walk in there with a the mindset of, if I don't get this, I'm I'm up up the creek with a paddle, because that's never the case. There's something very enabling, I think, about uh, interviewing for a job as well, because when you come out of it and you feel like people were truly interested in you, then uh, it's uh, definitely an ego boost. And so the next time you interview, you feel a little bit better about it. Yeah, you know, that's right. People want me. People are interested in me. They're asking the right questions. My, my first airline job was the only company that would give me the time of day when I had very little flight time. And I flew a uh, little beach 1900s for Colgan Air out of Bar Harbor, Maine, wow. down to Boston four times a day. That's pretty much all I did. In the summertime, awesome. we got to go to Martha's Vineyard and Hyannisport out of LaGuardia. And that was that was kind of interesting. But, um, you know, I, I wanted to be at Atlantic Southeast Airlines, which was wholly owned by Delta. And then I eventually wanted to go to Delta. That was my goal. And what was interesting is I've never interviewed for a job that I never got. So if I wanted to get a job, in my mind, I was like, I just have to go jump through the hoops. I'm going to get the job. I'm not worried about that. Well, my first, or I guess my second interview in aviation, I got the first one. I thought, well, ASA is not really talking to me because I don't have enough flight time yet. But I got an interview with a company called Comair. And I went and sat down to the interview and it went horribly, horribly. I went, I walked out of there and like, that was terrible. <laughs> like, the whole experience was terrible. I didn't get the job. Yeah. And I was devastated because I was like, but I wanted that job. And why wouldn't they give me that job? Because I, I, I wanted that job. Well, you know what? It all worked out. Come here was out of existence within, I guess, I don't know, five years later. And sometimes things just work out for a reason. I went and interview, interviewed at another airline after that. And uh, I all but walked out. It was the most unprofessional environment I had ever seen. And I was at Colgan, which was like the scum of the bottom of the barrel, <laughs> right? As far as airline goes, <laughs> they, were, they were regularly threatened to be shut down. Right. Eventually they got gobbled up after the uh, crash in Buffalo. They got gobbled up uh, by Pinnacle, which was owned by Northwest, which eventually got into Endeavor, which is now uh, Delta. Wow. So you know, that was a long path for those guys over one mistake. But um, yeah, you, you never know. You never know what the path's going to lead. And I think when you're in it, as we said earlier, you know, it's a season. You go through a season. Um, but there's something to be said, you know, if you have a job and you're looking for a job, I feel like that you get the job easier when you don't have a job and you're looking for a job, it's harder. So it's going to be an uphill, it's going to be an uphill climb a little bit, but at least you're in an industry that understands that you're in an industry that goes, well, he hasn't flown for six months, but well, that's because no fault of his own. You I, know, I agree. So, uh, stay positive. That, that, that's what I'm getting out of all this. Um, and there's, you know, and we talked about different ways to, to try to do that. There's another angle too, is what if your job's fine, but you're walking through the crew, crew lounge knowing that those four people over there are probably headed on the way out 
Or what if it's your neighbor and they don't have a job anymore? And I, th- I feel like ha- what happens is people just get kind of quiet and they don't really don't really talk to them. What what is, what is your advice on how do you handle it when somebody else has lost a job? How can you be encouraging and and, and you know not make it an awkward conversation? I would just encourage people. <clears throat> I would just encourage people to talk to each other, um, communicate, and um, ask people what they need. Um, that's not always a financial transaction. I mean, sometimes what people need is uh, just a conversation. Uh, I like to say to new clinical social workers that 60% of my job is just ventilation. People need somebody to listen to them. They need affirmation and they feel better after that. That's, I mean, that's just rule number one of clinical social work. So, uh, you know, communicate with people, ask them how they're doing, encourage them because all of those things uh, can be more helpful than you may even uh, realize. Yeah, it doesn't have to be an awkward conversation, you know. Invite them over for a barbecue, um, right? And it doesn't. It, and also, too, I, I don't think I would make it the main point of conversation, right? I think you just you address it and you say, "Hey, is there anything we can do for you?" Sorry to hear about your situation, and then just move on. Allow them to escape, you know, their purgatory, <laughs> yes, and just enjoy a meal, yes, laughing and talking about other things, you absolutely. Because uh, in the end, that's kind of what you need. Um, Right. And I would also say, don't forget about the um, the counseling community. Delta has one of the best benefits uh, in the state of Georgia. Uh, they just went from three uh, free employee assistance uh, program benefits to seven at the beginning of 2020, before anybody knew about COVID. And I see it every day that people are using these benefits. And uh, I can tell you for sure, 90% of my clients don't have a mental nervous diagnosis at all. They're coming in to do problem solving around just the kinds of things we're talking about. You don't have to come and see me. I'm pretty well booked up, to be perfectly honest with you. But there are lots and lots of very fine clinical counselors uh, in the Atlanta area. And I know some in Peachtree City. So, uh you know, I just want to encourage people not to forget that that's a part of their health benefit. It's part of a holistic uh, uh, kind of way of looking at your health, you know, uh, very important. Well, Wise Wealth Management is committed to uh, our, our pilot's physical health during this time as well. And I've, I've put it out there on social media. Um, if you want to come in and sit down and we can go through your finances with you. We'll be happy to look at the debt situation, your your the payments that you've got to make, what, what income's available to you. We can walk you through a little bit what uh, we've seen in unemployment benefits. Uh, this is not a, a bait and switch. Wiser Wealth Management really has nothing to sell. We're a fee-only firm. Uh, we, we manage assets for, for people, um, mostly in retirement or, or just pre-retirement. We work by the hour for a lot of families, helping them solve financial issues. But we're offering uh, an hour of just to sit down and say, this is the path um, that we see to help you get through uh, the next uh, 12 months. We did that yesterday with uh, with two pilots, actually. Matthews and I did looking at, uh, uh, you know, this is this is the income that's available. This is the uh, the debts and, and this is the living expenses. And how do we. How do we just put a Band-Aid on this so we get a reset uh, in, in 12 months? And honestly, it's it's not not as bad as, as a lot of people probably think that it is. Um, and, you know, we have the CARES Act. We have the ability to withdraw money from 401ks right now with no 10% penalty. Uh, so depending on your situation, that might be something uh, that needs to get done. I hate pulling money out of retirement. But like I said, you, sometimes you have to just get through a season. Yeah. And then if we can get you more fiscally uh, healthy on the other side, then that's more money that you can be saving into your new 401k plan or your existing 401k plan once you're back at work. But we're committed to helping the pilot community. Rick, thank you for your um, uh, your assistance today and, and what you've done for the airline community. 
uh, Matthews and Brad. Thanks for joining the conversation. And we'll see you guys next time. Thank you. Pleasure. Wiser Wealth Management Incorporated is a registered investment advisor. Information presented is for educational purposes only and does not intend to make an offer or solicitation for the sale or purchase of any specific securities, investments, or investment strategies. Investments involve risk and unless otherwise stated are not guaranteed. Be sure to first consult with a qualified financial advisor and or tax professional before implementing any strategy discussed herein. Past performance is not indicative of future performance.